We are live. Hello. Hi. Oh wow! Wait. How's it? What? We're starting out with with some love for Armin today. From oh Deborah. wow! Thank you, Deborah. Deborah, come on. I feel no. Just me. No love for Susan. No, no. Oh, no, no. That's sad. No, no, no. Did get something for? I was gonna be mean, but it felt bad. <laughs> But thank you, Susie. Oh, thank you, Deb. Deb, sorry. I'm getting <laughs> Freudian <laughs> slip. <laughs> um, Luke is confirming that he is alive. Hi, Luke. Getting... It's good to see you again. Good. And AJ and Soha. Okay, what the hell? I thought we were fixing these. I might, I might even, you know what? I think they, it's, I think it's just so, I think it's just to get more attention. So it I'm is. Gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to ignore it. I think oh, I'm going to. Hi, Mars. It's good to see I'm, you. I'm not, look at, I'm not even going to acknowledge what these people are doing. Mm -mm. I'm not going to do it. I think, I think, I think they enjoy seeing me get triggered. So I'm just going to. Yeah, they're looking for negative attention because they don't know how to get positive attention. Oh, <laughs> There you go. There you go. Okay. Oh, hi, Fatima. It's good to see you again this week. Yes. Um, different Fatima, not the bad Fatima. <laughs> Rivka couldn't, Rivka couldn't oh, make yeah. it. Guys, if she's not here, it means already that she couldn't make it. Why you guys are losing it over this? Anyways, we, should, we should get to... Yes. We should, we should get to this. Uh, oh, Soha is here as well. Okay, anyways, we should start it's okay, Armin. You have me. I'm not mean like that. Yes. Thank you, Ghost Bunny. Look at her. Look at her profile pic. Look at this. See? There's no fat Armin. There's no old Armin. It's just a bunny. It's a cute little bunny with, with a Santa, Santa hat. Look at this. Look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't give I'm it to I'm not going to give you what you want. No, in fact, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be mean to you only if you behave properly. If you exactly. Yeah. I and Suha is on Twitch reminding people that we're also on Twitch. Go subscribe to us on Twitch. It's it's not subscribed. This is follow. Yes, yeah, see, now we're not gonna get now to people that are on Twitch are like you guys don't even understand Twitch. Boomers. Oh yeah, I'm from the well, Philippines. Yes. Salem, Oregon, all over the world is here for the news. Um, is so, the first news good news or bad news? It is good news. Actually, good. guys, this week we have a lot of positive news. Wow. And um, what a concept. I know, right? And it's majority of it is LGBT related news. Maybe not majority, but a lot. A lot of LGBT news this week, and most of it is very positive LGBT news this week. This is this is a good excuse for the homophobes and the transphobes to come to come to the Oh, the, I thought this was the atheist republic. I didn't know this is the LGBT republic. What does this got to do with atheism? What does this got to do with the religion? You know, yeah. So we're gonna we'll see actually if we have comments like that. Um, <laughs> Fatma wants us to get started. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started. All right, this is a funny comment from Deborah. Mm, see, Deborah, look at her profile pic. No fat Armin, no just old Armin. Just Deborah, Deborah, just a cute Deborah with a cute Santa Claus. See, this is. In fact, this is what we're gonna do. Instead of punishing the people who uh, who are being doing misbehaving, because that's what they want. Yeah, who are bullying me. I will just keep paying attention to the people who are nice to me and we just give them the attention. So this is this is how we discourage bad behavior. It's okay. We just positive reinforcement. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. We're gonna ignore the people with that. Like look at AJ as well. Look, AJ. It's yeah. just a cute cute anime with a Santa Claus hat. It says F Christmas on her hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, okay, so let's... Are you excited? Are you ready? Are you ready to clap for the first news? Next news. First news. Oh, first news. First news. <laughs> I, I screwed up. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, the Supreme Court of the United States declines to roll back marriage equality. 
despite the presence of not one, not two, but three Trump-appointed justices, the Supreme Court of the United States, or SCOTUS for short, recently denied certiorari, aka judicial review, in a case that threatened to chip away at LGBT rights. The court's denial will reject the state of Indiana's discrimination against same-sex couples and will continue to preserve the essence of um, Obergefell versus Hodges, the case that federally recognized marriage equality across the nation in 2015. Indiana Attorney, Gen Indiana Attorney General Curtis Hill took the position in Box v. Henderson that st same-sex spouses should not have the same rights to be named on birth certificate as opposite-sex spouses. The case arose after Indiana refused to include the names of the wives of birth mothers on their children's birth certificates. The Supreme Court's denial of judicial review of this case means that the seventh Seventh Circuit Court's unanimous ruling in favor of equal treatment for same-sex parents still stands. Okay, so how does this happen with all these conservative judges and all? That's a good question. I, mean, I think um, it, it. There are so many people who are pissed. There are so many um, like Trumper Republicans who um, are really pissed at the Supreme Court right now, like how they. Yeah. Um, throughout texas's uh suit for my god tears they're like where's my bowl what the what the f is this court even for oh my god tears collecting, yummy collecting my god tears. <laughs> ah it's so tasty what does it taste like did you get a little wait no i need i need to, i need to try a little bit i want to i want to swish it in my palate <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Katie is saying salt prices going up. <laughs> no, Actually, you know they're going down because Katie doesn't, so Katie doesn't understand how supply and demand works. It's okay. You have to I yeah. barely have a grasp. I'm not kidding. <laughs> You have to buy them now because the supply goes up. That means the price goes down. So you buy them now so you can sell them later. Jesus. Katie. Yeah. Katie. So I think I want to, I want to explain a little bit more about what this case is about. So basically in Indiana, there was a situation where there were lesbian couples who were married, having children via artificial insemination um, or a variety of, uh, you know, fertility techniques. And so when these children were born, you know, there was the birth mother and then there was her spouse, her wife. Indiana was refusing to have her wife's name on their child's birth certificate, even though they were married. So this um, was going up through the courts and um, it was appealed at a Seventh Circuit court when the seventh circuit decided that what Indiana did was wrong. And so when it, once it was appealed from the seventh circuit, that means it goes to the Supreme court and they get to decide, are we going to hear this or are we not? They declined judicial review. So that means that the decision of the lower court stands. Um, and that means that the rights of um, same-sex parents in, uh, are further solidified across the country. Um, so this is a big deal. Um, and this case has been there... ongoing for some time. There was a similar situation that also happened in Arkansas, because um, I was speaking about Indiana earlier. Um, and um, in that case, the Supreme Court also sided with same-sex parents. Can you explain to me, if you can, mm -hmm. the motivation behind denying them having the name there? Like, what is what motivates somebody to be like, you know what, we're not going to give this to you? Like, what is what is why did you go to so much hassle just to disturb 
people's lives with things that doesn't affect anybody else, like doesn't harm anybody. Like, can and you it's like really discriminatory because husbands' names are regularly listed on birth certificates without any additional requirement. I know, but why? Why like the, like the people that are behind? Like, oh no, we're not gonna put same sex couples names on it right mm -hmm. like why what goes in their mind they're like ah oh, we're gonna we're not gonna put your name there oh you want it there we're gonna take this all the way to the supreme court the highest court in the land because god damn it like i mean and it's already legal for you guys to get married so technically this is the law of the land but we have this we really 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 don't want you to have your name there i mean why like what is like i mean can we steel man them a little bit like even with their screwed up christian ideology can we figure out well, we're making that assumption it's a, it's a pretty good assumption it's fact um but i haven't looked into that guy's background i don't know that but it's a, oh, pretty, yeah. it's a pretty good assumption <laughs> it's fact all right <laughs> no but but what 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 why 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 mm. do you why go through so, such lengths to just make people make people's lives like less equal like what is it like there must be like what is how do they justify this do you know I mean, they could you, say that you know the ruling of um Oberfeld versus hodges was regarding marriage equality did not have to do with parental rights i'm assuming that was part of their argument so what's the point of equality then? Well, I mean, but that uh, technically they would say they could say that that's a different field. Although different really, field. it doesn't make any sense because there is no extra additional requirement for opposite sex couples listing their names on birth certificates. Um, Alex saying, aren't aren't opponents scared that uh, gays will raise their kids to be morally bankrupt? I mean, yeah, we did not have it sailed. That has nothing to do with a name being on a piece of paper. Yeah. What, what is denying them having their name of the parent there? What would that achieve? It wouldn't achieve that. Like, well, it's just it like, it's just like, I was just going to poke. We just want to, we just want to deny you this because we're just meanies. Like, it's just like, doesn't, doesn't it look like this doesn't achieve anything. Like even based, this is what I'm saying, even based on their worldview, oh, uh, gay, bad, gay couples shouldn't have kids. This doesn't achieve denying them. This doesn't achieve anything even by their standards. This is just like, I just want to, I just want to remind you that you have to know your place that you're, you're still not the same. You're not the same as I us. Mean, in God Alex, damn it. This is not normal. This is an abomination. I just have to make it clear that you're different. Okay. I just have to remind you that, you know, is it, is it just not poking because it doesn't achieve anything even by even the goals that they want to achieve. This doesn't achieve it. I don't understand. What does it achieve? This is just poking. This is like, this is just a, we had gay, gay people statement, isn't it? Well, I mean, and this has nothing to do with raising your children to in their morality. This yeah. is about denying so someone guardianship rights, parental rights, rights as to claim someone as a dependent. Right? So even after they adopted the person, they're just making it more difficult for them to do the parenting that they don't need no, to do. No, not even adoption. This is through hmm. artificial insemination. Okay. Is, no. Yeah. So yeah. But someone in my spouse. But you already the have the baby. Right, but they just want to make it more difficult for you to do the parenting than now the baby. I mean, you already have the goddamn baby. What are, what are you doing Can now? I highlight like, a really dumb comment. Yes, please. Well, there's there's two. Lorraine is saying, "Relax, let religious be religious." <laughs> Lorraine. Yes. Lorraine. Dumbest take of the day so far. Are we? I'm just gonna let you know people yeah. in ghana accuse other people of witches and burn people to death or throw them in a river of crocodiles because i'm just gonna let them be that way what come on and then the corzo family is say okay i i don't even know how to feel about this they're saying they fear the breakdown of marriage this has been the case since the 1940s but th this, that's not what they believe is creating a breakdown in marriage because it's denying spouses rights to their children right. i'm not saying because i've seen you around i don't think that this is your position no but you no, do he, understand that that doesn't make any sense right i think he or she does i think they're just saying that this is 
I think this, they're just saying that this is their position. I think they fear. That's why you say I wanted to put on my gender studies hats. I would say that um, there has been more in uh, heterosexual couples culture that has caused the breakdown of um, marriage than homosexual culture. I am back. I think I'm back. Hey, right, I am back. Susie? Is Susie here? Wait, wait, wait. Susie? There we oh. go. Sorry about oh. that. I don't know what happened. I think that was a me thing. Or oh, was it really? both of us? Was it both of us? I don't know. I just switched my connection just in case. <laughs> okay. Wait, that person was not saying that they believe this. No, I said that. I said, I don't think that this is your position. Yeah, okay, okay. But I'm They're just going to get butt. Yeah. They can be butthurt. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, yeah, who was gone? Were we both? Where? See, some people on Facebook, people saw me gone. On YouTube, people, you, you being gone. I don't think this was a connection problem. This was a streamyard problem. <gasps> I'm absolved. I'm absolved this time. <laughs> um, uh, it's all good. Um, wait, did we miss? <laughs> yeah, no, it was Armin, but Susie thought it was her, so she left as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is why. I, okay, so Susie, whenever I have connection issues, you just continue as if like nothing happened. Okay, if I you don't leave, just like stay there and be like continue. Just put me, just remove me, um, from the stream and then continue. Yeah, anyway, I could have checked the uh, live. Yeah, stream. this is why I have this on the side to see what people are saying and so of course family is saying if one parent is removed from the household and the household is eligible for subsidies yes i think um well the welfare sister situation from the 1960s is a huge problem in this country but that's a whole different discussion and does not actually necessarily apply to the lgbt parentage rights mm. issue can i anyway. clap we should go to the next news can i yes. clap Okay, I'm hearing echo. Is it me that's hearing echo, or is it's everybody getting you? It? It's always just you. Okay. All right. Can we clap for the next news? Um. Yeah. No. Nah, it's not good, but it's not the end of the... I don't know. What do you think? I'll do a not very excited clap. Okay. Yeah. Next news. Next news. Iranian quote-unquote zombie angelina jolie teenager jailed for 10 years so an iranian woman who posted heavily photoshopped images of herself has been sentenced to 10 years in jail a year after her social media activities led to her arrest uh fatima kishvan also known as sahar tabar who is 19 became well-known for posting images of herself with a gaunt, zombie-like face, amassing up to uh, 486,000 no, 486, Instagram followers. Nicknamed Zombie Angelina Jolie, it was rumored that she had altered her face with dozens of cosmetic surgeries. In actuality, it was just Photoshop. Um, the charges against Tabar originally included blasphemy, inciting violence, gaining income through inappropriate means, and spreading corruption. Kishvand also has a history of visits to psychiatric hospitals, making the 10-year sentence even less acceptable. At the time of this writing, she has been released on bail. Wait, what is she being charged with? So she was originally charged with um, blasphemy, inciting violence, gaining 
income through inappropriate means, which I think is a euphemism for prostitution and spreading corruption. Um, so now two of those charges has been have been dropped. I think that um, one of them is that she's currently still um, the charge that's still being held against her is um, uh, insulting the Islamic Republic. And With her zombie Photoshop pictures? Yeah, like this is how insecure this regime is. So wait, so wait. Well, so according wait. to her lawyer, hmm. that is. Um, they look at an Instagram picture of some of a girl that photoshopped her pictures to look like a zombie. And they're like, you insulted the entire regime? Well, <laughs> let me, actually, let me clarify. Okay. Um, so th she first had those four charges against her. Hmm. Two of the four charges have been dropped, according to her lawyer, but she did not want to comment further because she's still hoping for a pardon. So we're not exactly certain what she's still, what charges she's still facing, but she was sentenced to 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And she was first <laughs> arrested when she was 18. <laughs> <laughs> like Katie, Katie saying this doesn't even make zero <laughs> sense. This makes negative sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, Alfred, Alfred, you're so wrong. This is like people think like, oh, she was lucky not to be executed. No, that's complete nonsense. This is extreme. This ten years is extreme, even by Iranian standards. Yeah. That's complete nonsense. People think people think like you, you what? Like Alfred, you're so dumb. You're so understanding of. The Middle East. So you think you put, you think in Iran, you post a picture of your Photoshop image of yourself on Instagram, and you're gonna get definitely like you're lucky not to get executed. Like this is how you hear some news that is really bad, mm -hmm. and then you have such an exact. This is the fact that you're not shocked by how extreme this is shows me how how your worldview is so off. Like how little understanding you, you have. You need to recalibrate your understanding of the reality yes. in Iran. We said Photoshop, guys. This is Photoshop. Or maybe Gossam is asking what Photoshop is. Photoshop is a photo editing. No, tool. come on. No, nobody's asking that. Like I'm being not... charitable. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, look, but so here's the thing, people. If you don't know, this is a shock even to Iranians in Iran. Yeah. Like 10 years. They can't fathom what the hell. Like, yes, it's like Iran is really, really bad. The laws are barbaric, backwards, insane. But even by their standards, people in Iran, when they saw this news, they were like, 10 goddamn years yeah. for this? And she's famous, too. Like, I knew about this girl years ago. Because, I mean, for a long time, people thought that she actually altered her face this way. Because, I mean, Iran is kind of famous for its cosmetic yeah. surgeries. Um but yeah. or culture of that um but no this is this is photoshop but i think she she there... she claimed that she would did surgery but she wasn't being honest she was just trolling yeah 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 she, um, was, she was trolling on instagram and she said she said like she was trying to like get notoriety no, yes she was telling like she used like photoshop i don't know filter or something uh and then she just joked yeah i I did surgery. So people get like, so a lot of people are like, oh my God, look at this crazy girl. She actually did surgery to make herself look like a zombie. She was trying to create like a, a clout or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Get, you know, get some. I, I don't think. At it. Yeah, she was very good at it. She was getting more followers on Instagram. Right? But I don't, if people think like she was dumb for doing this, now she's like, why would she do that to you in Iran? Honestly, I, I don't think like even. She she would ever assume that this would even get her in trouble. Like she's not doing anything um, way sexually that... sexually mm -hmm. suggestive. Like they're accusing her of like spreading corruption. I mean, there's so many Instagram models based in Iran right now, right? And they have and they look really pretty and they have like hundreds of thousands of followers. They're not getting in trouble, right? They're like, you know, they're modeling on Instagram. If they get very famous, they might get in trouble. I think this is what happened. I think she just got way too famous too fast. And then it got like, I don't know, because there's so many. I, I don't I think she's she shocked herself. She was like, what the hell? I wasn't even like, I wasn't even like, guys, be careful. Guys, 
I'm doing a live stream. Um, she's like, I wasn't even, I wasn't even told people like I was. She wasn't even inviting people to do anything. She was just being a zombie. It's like a Halloween thing. Yeah, I mean, she's a teenager, right? A teenager yeah, yeah. with like a history of mental illness. Like, it's mm-hmm. not uncommon for young girls with, you know, psychiatric mm-hmm. conditions to do things to make themselves shocking or seemingly um, ugly or distorted because I think it's a reflection of how she feels inside. Right? Um, oh my god, look at this comment. Soha saying, I told a friend about this story. They said if she is in Iran, then why would she spend send pictures of herself on social media? Oh my god, she's allowed what? to. Yeah, guys, even by Iranian standards, there's so many so many Instagram models based in Iran right now. You guys are like your friend is an idiot. Wait, like, I want to highlight a comment. Hmm. Fatima is saying uh, Iran is the capital of hell. No, the hell is named North Korea. Yeah. Iran well, is yeah. Bad, but like, let's be clear. Iran is second runner up tied with Saudi Arabia, I think. Number right. one is definitely number North one is definitely North Korea. Then it's Iran and Saudi Arabia. Actually, Pakistan is also running. Oh, Pakistan is Pakistan and Bangladesh. Yeah, we have to think about that. So Bangladesh is fourth, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Kim is saying that Tehran sees the opportunity to take, make an example of her in matters of deviance and disconformity. Yeah, actually, that that, makes more sense. That's Kim. Good. Yeah, that's the right take here. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically. Oh, yeah. Actually, that makes a lot more sense than anything else people said so far. Okay. So the the only way that you could possibly make sense of this, well, I mean, you can't. It doesn't make any sense. Like, if you want, if you wanted to, if you take morality out of it and just put strategically thinking, right? This is more about sending a warning to all the other models that they don't have the resources or time and energy to go after on Instagram, right? Just because the idea is like, ah, well, this is going to be like, there's so many Iranian models, right? On Instagram. And the government is going to have, doesn't want to go after all of them, right? So they just take one person that is very famous right now and they make an example out of it. And they think like, you know what? They're all, all of them, they're going to notice. How and they, we're gonna just scare the crap out of all of them with a ten-year sentence for something so mild, so that all of them are like, you know what? I'm gonna turn take down my account. Like we're just gonna scare the bejesus out of all of them, mm-hmm. and with one arrest and one sentence, we're gonna just basically cleanse all of them at the same time, right? So I think that might be the maybe that's that's yeah that makes it doesn't make like sense if you think about it morally. But if it, it makes sense, if you think about it strategically, like, look, something a- this, this, something this mild is getting this girl 10 years of sentence. So the rest of you get your act together, remove your accounts, take down your posts or else, or else this might be you next. But yeah. Go, yeah. Is there any sort of Islamic basis for this? Like, I mean, maybe you could interpret it as like, you know, distorting Allah's creation no, I mean it's. I mean, technically, if Iran really wanted to go full on Islamic, they wouldn't have pictures online at all. They wouldn't have pictures online at all. Like, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um, even Iran, even Iran doesn't go. Even guys, even Iran is not full Islamic. Imagine how bad full Islamic is. <laughs> it would get ISIS. Yeah. Um, oh, Trolls is saying, I think Xi Jinping's China is also way up there. We should do a ranking. <clears throat> well, it depends time. on if you adjust per capita or not. If you, yeah. do, if you do total harm, then yes, it's, that's number one. Okay? But if you adjust per capita, then it's North Korea for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so this is wild. A lot of people are tagging Angelina Jolie and trying to get her involved with this case because she's known as being a I believe a human rights ambassador a representative for the United Nations or just involved as a human rights activist in general um, 
Okay, and buy some, hopefully uh, her sentence can be buy some, lowered. Hold on, let me see. This one. Awesome saying, Islamic Republic had put a teenager in jail for dancing and sharing video in uh, in Instagram. These punishes are normal. First of all, Gossip, no, they're not as normal as you say they are. Dancing has precedent for them to punish. Dancing is what they consider sexually inviting and sexually suggestive. This, oh. this is unprecedented. Okay. This is new. This is not normal. And 10 years is not normal. Even by, I'm, I'm not defending Iranian standards. This is not, this is a new, this is, this is a shock even by Iranian standards. Okay. Uh, again, what you're saying happened, happens a lot, but not like, there are also a lot of people that get away with it. Right. Uh, there's like, I've seen, you know, close to, I don't know, 50 videos of girls dancing in Iran. Not all of them. I mean, if they had the resources and time, probably all of them would get arrested, right? Mm -hmm. But the dancing ones are more in line with what we expect for them to have a reaction to. Having a zombie Photoshop picture on Instagram, this is a this is not something that was... And this yeah. is something she first started doing as a child. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, Katie is saying, I think Iran needs to show themselves as quote unquote strong after the assassination in the Israeli flag in Tehran. No, I don't think this is the case. She was jailed over, first jailed over a year ago. Yeah, but maybe the 10 year sentence is like a, that's new. She was still able to get bail though. Mm. Recently. So since the Guardian posted about this new story, she was able to get bailed out of jail. So people are trying to um, use international pressure and the benefit of her age and past history of uh, psychiatric conditions to help uh, lower the, sentence. The understanding is also is that they they might want like I don't know two or three years, so they think like if they start with two or three years or something like that, the lawyer is going to bring it down, so they start with ten. Yeah. So that they could bring it down to, but it's still crazy. I still mean, it's still insane. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so let's get into the next news. Okay. Can I clap, for, clap this one? for this one? Next news. Next news. Austrian court overturns primary school hijab ban. Austria's constitutional court recently struck down a law prohibiting primary school children from wearing specific head coverings. Coming into effect last year, the legislation did not specify that the hijab was banned, but instead prohibited the wearing of, quote, religious clothing that is associated with a covering of the head, end quote, for children younger than 10. However, the government had previously said that head coverings worn by Sikh boys or the Jewish skull cap, aka a kippa, um, would not be affected. The court thusly decided that the ban was aimed uniquely at Muslim headscarves. The court president, Christoph Garbenwarter, said, quote, the selective ban applies exclusively to Muslim school girls and thereby separates them in a discriminatory manner from other pupils. So I support this overturning because it was not being um, applied evenly. Why can't you just apply it evenly instead of overturning it? Well, because it was not, it was not actually, um, the government had made statements saying that specific ones were exempted. Well, just remove the exemptions. Yeah, they, well, okay. It, it's a little bit complicated. Like, let me find it. Just a second. Yeah, I agree with Katie here. They need to ban all kinds of religious symbols. Yeah, this is public school, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, huh? Yes. 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 Yeah. What the hell? So something is not being done properly, and instead of fixing it, you just throw it away? I don't agree with I the hell. The language of it needs to be like redone basically no lurian okay lurian you say lurian is saying let people w wear whatever they effing want yeah they can wear whatever they want when at home or in public not in government funded institutions that you should separation of religion and uh states 
is very important. You, do, you, you, do, you cannot start using government-funded institutions as a way to advertise your religion. Yeah, so the way that my understanding is, because, you know, I I can't speak the language, I can't really dig into the um, the verbiage of the legislation myself, um, is that it was a, written in a way that was a, bound to be applied in a discriminatory manner. So it basically needs to be rewritten. Um, so they... Um. Let me let me provide a little bit of background on this. The law was passed during the previous coalition government in which the conservative People's Party was allied with the far right Freedom Party. The court said the law would lead to the marginalization of Muslim girls. Um, the, it also rejected, meaning it being the court, um, the government's argument that the prohibition could protect girls from social pressures from classmates, saying that it penalized the wrong people. It said, if necessary, the state needed to draw up legislation to better prevent bullying on the grounds of gender or religion. Um, this is religious privilege. No other. What if you wanted to come to school with like a K, triple K costume, well, right? Or or the or the yacht Yahtzee symbol, right? Mm -hmm. Like people would be like, nope. No, 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 no. Like, oh, but my sky daddy told me I have to wear this. Oh, okay, then. This is basically the government recognizing divine authority. Okay? I think this is this is not as this is this to me shows Sikh and Jewish privilege, right? Because yeah. they realize that they can go again. I actually I'm gonna defend the Muslims here, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it seems too easy to go after Muslims to remove their headscarf. And then all of a sudden, when they realize, oh, we have to go after the Jewish people as well, they're like, yeesh, yeah. we cannot. And they're like, yeah, we don't want to tell them that they have to remove their religious symbols. Like, okay, forget it, forget it, forget it. They're like, what the hell? This is religious privilege. These are the standards that they would be able to apply in public school if people didn't have the excuse of my sky daddy told me that I have to wear this, yeah. right? We have to remove religious privilege. This is not you being uh, unfair to religious people. This is you removing their privileges. And removing their privileges to a lot of people sounds like they're being harassed or targeted because they're so used to their privileges. And this is for children, guys, remember. And think about what the hijab represents. Yeah. So, yeah, this is anti-indoctrination of children. God damn it, yeah. N and yeah. so, um, uh, yeah, here's a good quote. Education um, mm -hmm. Minister Heinz Fossman said he took note of the judgment but added, quote, I regret that girls will not have the opportunity to make their way through the education system free from compulsion, end quote. The Austria's Islamic faith community, which represents the country's Muslims and brought the legal challenge, welcomed the ruling. Um, in, quote, ensuring equal opportunities and self-determination for girls and women in our societies is not achieved through bans, it said in a statement. When the legislation was first proposed in 2018, Chancellor Sebastian Kurz said that the goal was to, quote, confront any development of parallel societies in Austria. So this is similar to Emmanuel Macron's efforts to make sure that um, French Muslims in his country are fully integrated into French society and enjoy all the rights that are granted to them as citizens of the Republic. Um, uh, Vice Chancellor Heinz Christian Strauch of the uh, Freedom Party said the government wanted to protect girls from political Islam which is from Islam as a whole, though. Yeah, kind of a stupid thing to say. But the ban came into force in May 2019, just days after Mr. Strouch was forced to resign after being secretly filmed offering public contracts to a woman posing as a Russian oligarch's niece. Whoa, interesting. Um, the People's Party is now in coalition with the Green Party, but the government had still intended to extend the headscarf ban up to the age of 14. The coalition's current program stipulates that children should grow up, quote, with as little coercion as possible, end quote. The only you know, example it gives is the wearing of headscarves. So that's where the problem comes in. 
This is this. By the way, the forcing that is happening. The, these are children. Okay, the actual forcing that is happening is by the parents on these children. Okay, yeah. so this will give the kids an excuse to not be forced by the parents to wear the hijab or whatever are the religious symbols that they ha that they are forced. Like people are like, oh, they have the right. They have. They should have the right to choose. Well, some they don't. Yeah, exactly. So. Stop the parents from forcing hijab on their children. Um, you know, the children are not choosing this. Their parents are choosing it for them. And by the, the laws like this makes it more difficult for, their, for parents to force religion on their children. Luke is saying yeah. hijab and self-determination, <laughs> two words that don't really work. Exactly. Especially for children. Yeah, and again, remember, this original ruling was just a ban for children under the age of 10. Yeah, it's, it, well, it, it's per, this is a great law. It's funny how people are like, ah, pe let people wear what they want. Yes, please, stop the parents. Yes, yeah, people, like, they're talking about children, and they're telling us that, oh, you should let them wear what they want. Yeah, this, this law is stopping the parents from forcing their gut bull crap on their kids. Ex exactly for making sure that children are not being forced by the parents to adhere to religious standards, being brainwashed by them. This is a good law. This is going to introduce sexualized yeah. as a prepubescent child. Yeah. You know, honestly, I think hijab for children should be illegal given what it means. Anyways, I don't know about that actually. Uh, at least for children. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. Any other comments on this? Um, no. If this was applied evenly, I think this is um, good. Oh, I, Lewis has an interesting question. Hi, Lewis. It's good to see you again. Um, Lewis is saying, will the parents keep the girls out of school? So this is a concern I always have because there are certain um, women and girls who experience a situation where it's like, if you're not wearing some form of covering you're not leaving the house mm -hmm. and i would rather have them covered and being able to leave the house receive that education because then they would have more more opportunity a greater likelihood of being to have create the resources within themselves to leave that situation altogether and live independently that if if that's the situation i'm for that now i don't know if this is the case i know in germany children cannot be homeschooled you have to go to public school or the government will come after the parents i don't know what the situation is like in austria so when germany had similar legislation parents do not have the option to just keep girls out of school i'm um if anyone knows if that's a similar situation in austria please let me know Armin, you're muted. Why didn't you tell me? I've been speaking for for a while. For a second, uh, I with my headphones. <laughs> okay, Tim is ha Tim has the same concern, um, and I I understand the concern, but that shouldn't be a concern. The concern people have is that uh, what if they don't let their kids go to school if you don't allow them to wear the hijab in in public schools? Guys, this is government funded public schools. Okay. Um, so of course the religious symbols shouldn't be allowed. And this is but, secular education. Yeah, that would be secular education. But that shouldn't be a concern that the parents would not let their kids to go to school because that's illegal. You cannot not have your kids not go to school, right? You cannot. So there's you don't have a choice. Your kids have to go to public school. Okay. Uh, people are giving us more information. Oh, wait, whoops, um, saying in Austria, public education is mandatory. So that's there. not really an issue. Charles exactly. is also saying education is compulsory in Austria as well. So there you go. So the Canberra, this is actually a perfect two, two things. Like they, uh, education is mandatory and hijab and other religious symbols are banned. This is a perfect way of not allowing parents to indoctrinate and brainwash the children. You're like, oh, you let them wear what they want. Exactly, they are children. The parents shouldn't be able to force the hijab on them. That's why this is a good law. Yeah, and Deborah had the same immediate concern as me because she was, she 
that Deborah should be allowed. Is, a, is an ex fundamentalist. Deborah is saying right away, I saw them keeping them home and homeschooling because if you can't leave the house covered, then you're not leaving the house at all. It's, that shouldn't be allowed. You should simplification of the mentality. Um, but that's not the case in Austria because it's compulsory. Now I see this is why France is going the right way and mm -hmm. restricting homeschooling as well. Okay. Homeschooling should only be for special needs or certain others, uh, you know, concerns that would be allowed. You, you don't get to keep your kids uh, at home and indoctrinate them. You don't have possession over your children. The government is supposed to protect its citizens and children are the main citizens that are need to protect, especially if they need to protection from the indoctrination and the brainwashing of their parents. They need to be exposed to secular education and they need to do it without advertising their religious dogma to other kids. Yeah. Um, cool. So should we move to the next news? It's really good news. It's fantastic news. All right. Okay. So I can say clap. Yay. Next news. Next news. Bhutan decriminalizes homosexuality. In the Himalayan nation of Bhutan, um, both houses of Bhutan's parliament recently approved a bill on December 10th to legalize gay sex, making the small Himalayan nation the latest Asian country to ease prohibitions on same-sex relations. Previously, under sections 213 and 214 of the Bhutanese Penal Code had criminalized, quote-unquote, unnatural sex, widely interpreted to mean homosexuality. Next, the reforms must be approved by the King of Bhutan to become codified into law. LGBT rights activists in the majority Buddhist nation of around eight uh, 800,000 people celebrated the bill's approval as significant progress in changing the nation's attitudes on same-sex relationships. Okay, so great. What took you so long, I guess, but thank you. Um, uh, I'm not nearly as much as of a, a pessimist as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean... Bhutan, like what the what's up? Like, why is it like seriously 2020? This that's how long it took you. I mean, you're not even Islamic country or anything. Like, look how far behind the world is that you don't have to even be Islamic for you to, for it to take you this long. Guys, this is I mean, this is great, okay? But this, this is, is not fantastic. This is not legal, this is not as far as legalizing gay marriage. No, this okay. is really just this is like a sex act this is like between consenting adults. Years behind getting there. I don't understand so how many people don't see the don't understand the difference, right? Like so many times you say, like, oh we're yeah, like what? even no, for example, we have the news like, oh, we're fighting for gay marriage in India, and people are like, wait, I thought it was already legalized. So like that was just a Re relation like just activity not that the marriage or the sexual orientation itself yeah no guys like so, I, so easy, I hear this from people in india and like guys we need to fight for gay marriage in india and people from india they're like it's already legalized didn't you oh hear the news but like no just them is they just decriminalize gay people having sex with each other that doesn't mean gay marriage has been legal that's like that's like a decade behind legalizing gay marriage, right? Uh, like that's m miles behind that, right? So please understand that one of them is an astronomically bigger win than the other, right? I mean, this is good and all, but this is just like taking some, this is basically saying like, oh yeah, you just have natural urges with each other and you want to have fun. We're not going to punish you for that. I mean, this is like such a, I mean, where is Deborah here? Do we have? Do we hand out cookies? I mean, I guess it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's good news, not in the sense of like I don't feel like congratulating them. I I just oh I feel like saying like, hey, it's great that you're just slightly less evil because they still. I mean, they're still. It's not equality. Gay marriage hasn't been legalized, right? This is kind of like somebody just punching in the face 10 times a day and now they're punching you in the face nine times a day. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I mean, Deborah be... gave us some cookies. Thank you, Deborah. No, this is not for us. This is for Bhutan. Okay, here's the deal. You can feel that way. I think that's 
fair to feel that way towards the government of Bhutan. I will still mm-hmm. celebrate this for my LGBT community living in Bhutan. I will celebrate this alongside those activists who pushed for this. And it still needs to be highlighted that it needs to be approved by the king before it be- actually becomes law. I don't know his history or stance on homosexual um, relations, but he's quite young. So mm. I'm hoping that makes this more likely. Um, there's There seems to be, um, I think maybe Bhutan is kind of trying to open up to the world more because they recently formally normalized relationships with Israel over the past week. Like, I didn't even know that Bhutan didn't have normalized relationships with Israel. Israel gets so much such a bad rep. Uh, Ghost Bunny is saying, small victories are still worth celebrating. It does suck that it took so long, but it's good they got there, though. It's a, it's a small step in the right direction. Yes, yeah. You know you could be celebrating something and also be angry that it took so long and that it didn't go farther at the same time. These are not mutually exclusive positions you could be like yay and screw you for taking us long and screw you for not going further but yay you could do that at the same time right um cool yeah jonathan is saying the sad thing about this is although it is decriminalized the society in bhutan will still oppress them both emotionally and physically this means nothing i couldn't agree disagree more strongly this means everything are you kidding me that you this is no longer a crime a crime that you can no longer be taken to court for this i think that's pretty significant i think that's, that's pretty, pretty significant. meaningful you that's think pretty i'm pretty, 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 pretty meaningful yeah that's pretty significant just because things are still bad that doesn't mean this is not significant god yeah. damn it this is black and this is called black and white thinking. Okay, mm-hmm. this is how people can think in the spectrum. They can have nuances. I, something is either all good or all bad. There's nothing in between. This is called black and white thinking. Look it up and be better. Okay, be best. We're gonna miss that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Ali Rizvi is still gonna say it. Yes. It doesn't matter what first lady is in office. <laughs> be best, everyone. He's still gonna say it. Um. Yeah. So we can also clap for the next news. We can? Yeah. Next news. Next news. Survey finds that young Americans still hide their atheist label. The Secular Student Alliance and American Atheists recently released a new analysis analysis of the Secular Survey, which is possibly the largest survey ever conducted on American atheists. The report has been titled quote, the tipping point generation, America's non-religious youth, and revealed several new findings, including younger atheists are found to be 2.5 times more likely to hide their atheist label than adults, half had experienced discrimination online, and almost one-third of youth, or those who had school-aged children, reported adverse experiences in educational settings within the past three years due to their secular identity. Oh, wow. He's just going to walk out like that? Wait, let me put the banner on. With no warning, too. Okay, so I thought one of my comments on this was that they were talking about, like, discriminatory experiences online. I don't know. Maybe I'm just so desensitized to it because of what the Hindu has put me through. <laughs> but I'm like, eh, facing discrimination online, like that's going to happen like to every community. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, um, yeah, maybe I'm just desensitized or maybe I don't take it as seriously as I should. Um, why, why did you walk out on me like that? I had to pee. Wow. <laughs> no heads up, too. Um, so Boy. what we did learn from this survey is that um, there are a lot more youth than there have been historically. Like, that's why it's called the tipping point generation. Um, this is why you need to, well, I suggest you use the label atheist, okay? Be part of the normalization. I mean, this is why people are like, you know what? I don't believe in God, but I don't like the label atheist. That's why you should use it. That's why you should use it because you're like, ah, I don't want to cause 
stigma and um, people have negative reaction when you say atheist. Yes, so be part of the normalization of atheism. If you don't believe in God, wear the atheist label proudly and openly so you could help contribute, contribute to the to fighting the demonizations of atheists all around the freaking planet. You have to use it as much as you possibly can. Just if people ask you, be like, well, I, like, well, I don't believe in God, no, but I don't know if I want to come. Then screw you. Get out of here. Like, you're not helping. You're not helping. This is exactly um, why, why a lot of um, gay rights activists, right, they, they had a problem with a lot of gay people that were saying that, yeah, guys, why do we have to – like go fight for these things. We already have people fighting. Like we could just like be like underground and do our thing. We don't need to go out and tell people that this is a. They they will never get it. They will never get it, guys. If we actually do this and try to normalize this, the backlash is going to be even tougher, and we're going to have a bad experience. And it's all going to be like uh, our community can't handle this anymore. Wait, I need to be on the left. Um, so and and the other gay rights activists are like oh screw this what the hell if they, do, they they better get used to this like what no 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 like we can't accept this we're gonna go normalize this and now it's our turn okay normalize atheism where the atheist label pro this is why I was so upset with the Richard Dawkins Foundation because they were like what was that part that what is that like they wanted to do normalize all of this right and they're like what was that openly secular project. I like openly secular. Who is where is secularism demonized as a, like who is scared of being openly scared? Muslims in Islamic countries are openly secular and they advertise how secular they are. Okay, even in in Iran, people say like, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm for secularism. No, nothing mm -hmm. happens to them. What that doesn't need normalization. Atheism needs normalization. This is, I mean, if the Richard Dawkins Foundation itself think like the the atheist label is too taboo to use in their campaign and they have to go with the word secular instead that shows you how much of the normalization the word atheist needs when we were starting atheist republic so many people told me like oh army no atheist republic is too is too aggressive you know, aggressive call it the humanist republic or the secular republic i'm like nope no 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 atheist republic atheist republic okay that's what needs to be normalized anyways i'm done ranting um daniel saying is this really clappable i suppose this means there are more atheists than we thought but it doesn't mean that there is prejudice towards uh there's prejudice that people are afraid of yeah that sure i'm clapping because no one died okay this is the level of news we're normally dealing with okay <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> No, yeah. um so there was other things that this um new analysis of the survey revealed for example secular advocacy issues that matter to younger atheists are different than those that matter to adults for example um youth and older participants in the u.s secular survey held similar views about the importance of many secular policy issues such as climate change abortion and lgbtq rights however youth were significantly less likely to say that preventing inappropriate political activity by per churches, preventing public funding of religious schools, and opposing religious displays on public property were very important. Th they, they were less likely to say that than were adults that were over the age of 25. Which I think makes sense. I think when you start to reach like full adulthood, your priorities shift a little bit. Um, but I'm like, guys, you need to get into... I, I think getting the youth interested in and passionate about the separation of church and state is important um yes do you have any more thoughts on this um are there any comments you want to highlight or anybody said anything interesting in the live chat um lewis is saying and this is a good point hi lewis um i love you so much uh so some kids could be thrown out of their homes if they say they're atheists or their parents might withdraw money for education this is a good point those are other factors that are external to the larger societal culture or you know more of a macro system that could be influencing someone's willingness to come out for a lot of people around the world financial independence is a big determining factor in their 
um, the openness of their non-religious identity. Katie's saying, I have been wearing the atheist badge ever since I came to know there's a team, there's a term atheist. I was like, oh, there are other people like me. Exactly. Aww. Wear that badge, wear it proudly so other atheists know that they're not alone. Okay. That's you're helping just by calling yourself. This is the tiniest level of activism you could do. Okay. You could just be like, I'm an atheist. That you just by saying that you're helping. You are helping. Just use it. Okay. Wait, Especially this is another I really sweet comment from Katie. Hmm. The atheist in AR is the reason I came to know that there are communities of people who don't believe in random fairy tales. So great job. <laughs> we love you, Katie. You're, we're Aww. glad that you're part of our community. Yes. yes. Grateful, even. Um, Wait, you forgot Luke tagged us. You didn't. Uh, you, why are you ignoring our members? We I, have, you know, we are that is very uncharitable. That it's, are, I'm not ignoring if I missed it. We are contractually obligated to highlight member comments if it's relevant and if they have tagged us. Okay. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. Okay. So, Luke is mentioning something that I spoke of when you were peeing without giving me notice. Um, <laughs> Like is saying, when has any discussion about God or atheism online not been a negative experience online? Exactly. Like this statistic, okay, I'll read it. Half half meaning 50.3% of youth participants had encountered negative experiences and discrimination while using social media or commenting online. This is especially concerning because participating in online secular communities and discussing their beliefs online may be the only available method for many young people to express or engage with their non-religious beliefs. This is especially true young people in very religious areas or those whose parents are not supportive of their belief. Um, so I understand why they highlighted the concerns about youth facing discrimination in an online setting. But like I was saying earlier, I'm like, guys, it's online. Like, what do you expect? Like, you think other communities, like half of another community doesn't experience discrimination online? I'd rather face discrimination online than in real life. Like, what the heck? Um, so for Rune, super Rune, thank, thank you for you the so super much. chat, Varun. Um <laughs> Farun is saying, you guys are not hated enough in India. <laughs> Please, more action. On uh, it. I think we're, we have an idea for some love jihad art, and I think that Ooh, will, I think yes. Farun, I think that will, I think that will take us there. I've, you know how we had an art of Katie Dumb and, no, Katie, um, what did I say? Callie. Callie. <laughs> <laughs> not katie kelly hello, oh, hello. Uh, kelly dominating over muhammad now we're gonna do an art we didn't get any thank yous from india for that right so now we're gonna do an art where muhammad is dominating over sita see yeah yeah so that's gonna be oh wait, uh, luke luke's Luke, another comment from Luke that we are contractually obligated to read. Luke is saying, even in the UK, where about 50% don't believe in God, if you say you're atheist, you get weird looks. Still a stigma. Yeah. People interpret it as ex like an extremely harsh, like antagonistic word. I'm like, no, that's an anti-theist. That's antagonistic. <laughs> and um, I don't think... Um, Actually, I have no idea. I think there's a much smaller percentage of people who are secular who are anti-theists. Um, yeah. Okay. So we got oh, another. Man, thank you again. Another super chat. Another five dollars. Thank you. Saying please milk some Hindu for cows. <laughs> really? I thought I thought we slaughtered them. Guys, we slaughter we yeah, we slaughter hand for cows and we hand out burgers here in the live chat. We should do that. Ooh, we yeah, should, every time right now. Every time we slaughter a sacred cow, Deb Debra is our baker. Who's our hamburger maker? We have to assign I think I think, I think Katie should give out burgers because Katie's the ex Hindu. Yes, Katie is our official hamburger maker in the live chat. <laughs> Every time we slaughter a sacred cow, we turn it into burgers, and Katie's gonna hand out burgers. Yeah. Okay. Katie, find the find the burger emoji. No, not AGA. AGA. 
we will we will designate <laughs> you. We will we will have an official designation for you at some point. But right now, yeah, Katie, we need to come uh, up with something good. Yes, we will come up with something relevant to AJ. Oh, oh wow. wow, Varun, thank you. Gave us a super sticker. What is it? It's a pearl. Uh, it's a p uh, pearl. Yeah, we're going to keep it up. Thank you. Okay, the only problem is that cookies and hamburgers are Don't definitely know. a violation of your diet, Armin. Not if they are not emoji. not if, emo, yeah no these are calorie free burgers and cookies okay Luke is asking for a vegan option no <laughs> no definitely definitely not definitely not <laughs> is this how we're blaspheming against uh, veganism yes um okay oh there we go Katie there you go Katie we don't have the budget for four burgers at the time okay. <laughs> Just do one burger at a time. When we get more patrons, link to our patron in the description. We will hand out burgers more easily. But right now, one burger at a time. Thank you. Anyways, do we? can we go to the next news? Yes, we can. But I don't think we should clap for this. Hmm. Okay, next news. Okay. China's tiny Jewish community in fear as Beijing erases its history. In China, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has waged a brutal campaign against foreign influence and unapproved religion since 2015, part of a push to Sinicize faith, which included detaining over a million Muslims in the Xinjiang region. China's, suppre China's suppression has hit the nation's tiny congregation of Jews whose ancestors settled over a millennia, millennium ago along the Yellow River in Kaifeng. The crackdown has now spread to the roughly 1,000 people in Kaifeng who claim Jewish heritage, of which only about 100 are practicing Jews. The community has survived without a rabbi for over 150 years. Quote, it's government policy. China doesn't want to recognize us as Jews, one anonymous man disclosed to the Telegraph. Their goal is to make sure the next generation doesn't have any Jewish identity, end quote. The government has paved over synagogue ruins, installed cameras at historic Jewish landmarks, and Hebrew schools established by foreign nationals have been forced to close. Okay, putting morality aside, this doesn't even make sense strategically for China. How big is the Jewish community in China for them to invite? I mean... When you go after the Christian churches, you get, I don't know, the churches and some human rights group after you, right? When you go after Muslims, you don't get that much backlash from Muslims themselves, except a few countries like Turkey, right? Uh, and, you know, not that much, unfortunately. Like per capita, we have been calling out China more than on per capita basis, way more than a lot of Islamic channels out there, right? Yes. Um, but when you go after the Jewish community, isn't that like an open invitation for the entire planet to go after you? I mean, isn't this like the one of the greatest taboos that there mm -hmm. is? Like, is it like this is, but, but Katie is like, what happened to Never Again? I don't know. I would be shocked if this doesn't get a bigger reaction. But given the, I mean, I hope, I hope now, because I think the Jewish community is better than the Muslim community when it comes to actually giving the appropriate reaction to something like this. Do you know what I mean? Like the, to calling it out. And, um, and I hope that this will get the, the backlash that it deserves. And I don't understand why would China's government do that because when it comes, you know, China is trying to create a homogenous society where everybody is not following, you know, Christianity, Islam, everybody is just worshiping the CCP. And even if they have Islam, it has to be like the, their, their version, their approved version or their Christian approved version that is like in line with the Communist Party and all. 
as but i can see like if you're like a evil like a dictator that is trying to do that i can see how you see the christian community or the muslim community as a threat because there's just so many of them but i don't understand the cost benefit analysis here the jewish community is so tiny in china that they're never going to be a threat and they are probably going to invite the biggest international backlash i don't know maybe i'm wrong I'm, I hope I'm not wrong. I hope that it is going to get the backlash. I wish that they all got black, bigger backlash, mm -hmm. but the Jewish community backlash is more likely given the history of what happened to Jewish community internationally. Mm -hmm. Internationally, this has the <clears throat> highest chance of uniting the people to call out China's human rights violation, right? So why would what's the cost-benefit analysis here for the Chinese government? Go on, Susanna. So mm -hmm. for background, because I see people like asking about China's policy of religions or they're saying like it's only buddhist this is not actually true so there are five faiths that the communist party recognizes and regulates okay i'm holding up four fingers it should be five <laughs> five fingers <laughs> even okay quote even for the five faiths that the party does recognize and regulate which is buddhism taoism islam protestantism and catholicism pressures abound for example, Buddhist temples, for instance, are allowed to display portraits of Mr. Xi, as in Xi Jinping. You're pulling up the wrong news. Okay, I'll look into it. Don't worry. You continue. Um, uh, but they're not allowed to show photos of the exiled spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, although not all Buddhists follow the Dalai Lama. Um, so ch here's some where some of the strategy or maybe political consideration is coming in. Chinese authorities are also concerned about undue foreign influence if the Kaifeng Jewish community is allowed to build links with Jews abroad. In quote, in terms of numbers, it's so insignificant, but in terms of potential attention, it's much, much bigger, said Noam Urbach, an Israeli academic who has studied the Kaifeng Jews. Their existence can, quote, raise a lot of attention among the international Jewish community, end quote. Wow, I had the same take as the academic without even reading that comment. Look at this, guys. This is why you come to Atheist Republic. <laughs> I, did, I didn't do the years of education of that academic, and I had the like, same exact reaction right from the beginning, first time. It's, I don't even need to go to, like, I have the same um, level of so nuance. Yeah, go ahead. But you're right. This is a this speaks to how far the suppression is getting. That they're going after a community of there's only one thousand people who have ethnic heritage, right? Hmm. The, this community reached its peak in the 1500s. No, 1500s with only five thousand people. Okay, that's as large as it ever got. Now. There are only 1,000 who can claim ethnic heritage, only roughly 100 who actively practice. And in Kaifeng, stones engraved as far back as 1489 with the community's beliefs and ancestries that used to mark a 12th century synagogue have disappeared from public exhibit. An ancient well, believed to be the synagogue's last ruins, has likely, likewise vanished under a cloak of cement. The authorities have also torn down the city's few Hebrew signs that once marked the teaching Torah lane. In that same lane, a spot where a few dozen Jews, some of whom were government officials, used to meet up for services, is now plastered with propaganda about China's, quote, management of religious affairs. They include reminders that Judaism is prohibited. A security camera is directed at the entrance. The crackdown is so intense that Kaifeng residents are afraid to dine together in public. Quote, it's a small place, one Jewish man said. Quote, restaurant managers know that we are the Jews and they will report us to the authorities. End quote. Across the city, the remaining trace of Jewish heritage appears to be two tombstones with the Star of David and epitaphs in Chinese and Hebrew. But even this, they fear, will soon be gone. Okay. And then it details their underground um, networks and Shabbat services. I mean, I hope this actually gets the backlash that it deserves, right? But I like now, maybe now we can unite the goddamn planet. It's like one million Muslims being in concentration camps for being a, the crime of being Muslim is not enough, I think, to get the world united. But how many Jews again, you said? Only. 
roughly 100 practicing Jews in a country I think that would be over, I would... in a country of over a billion. Right. They're going after w roughly 100 people. I, I think this 100 people are going to be more will get more backlash than a million Muslim. Okay. Oh, possibly 2 million. 2 million. Oof. Let's say 1 million. Okay. Um, I bet you, I think that we have a higher chance of this 100 people getting a backlash, uh, getting the backlash that it finally deserves more than a 1 million Muslims in concentration camps. Okay. Which is a shame, but we have to work with what we can get. If we could bring use this news as a way to go against the fascism of china we have to do it okay we have to do it um which is which again i don't understand this because china chinese government not china chinese government is evil for sure straight up but they're not dumb mm -hmm. okay so i really i don't understand here what was the can we like steel man them not from a moral perspective but from a strategic perspective like there is no way that they saw this hundred people as a threat and yet they went after them knowing that they there's a, the backlash to this could be much more significant than the million muslim that they put in concentration camps so why it's part of this a broader crackdown that's been happening on unofficial religion since 2015. This, this so so some some it must be something else. Some Jewish academics are arguing that this is not specifically anti-Semitic. Yeah, this they're just anti-religion. But maybe okay, if I really, really, really want to like steel man the the strategy at play here, okay, maybe it's just signaling that look, we're doing even this. That's how bold we are. Oh wow! Like, like you can, like I don't know. Maybe it's a signal of not holding back at all. Like it's a it's a show of strength that even even this that is your sacred cow, Western countries, we're not gonna hold back on even this. So you guys thought you guys thought you could intimidate us on these other issues, and we're gonna stop doing that. We're gonna go. We're gonna double down even on the things that you didn't think. Yeah, go on. Trails is saying it sh it should be interesting to see whether Israel launches a rescue operation of these Chinese Jews like they did for the Ethiopian Jews. Well, speaking of, mm. Kaifeng Jews hope that Israel will support them, though they aren't considered Jews under Israeli law after oh, generations no. of intermarriage. Judaism has not been passed down consistently enough through the maternal line. Mr. Uh, Leitner, who is an expert who is referenced in this article, also doubts that Israel wants to jeopardize Sino-Israeli relations for, quote, the sake of a couple thousand people. Indeed, and, indeed, Israel has deepened trade ties with China over recent years. The Israeli embassy did not respond to multiple requests for comment. This is horrible. But yeah, the difference is Ethiopia is Ethiopia, and China is China, the the potentially second, you know, world power in a couple of decades, is going to become dominating the East. Like, I mean, do you really think Israel will want uh, Israel right now? An Israel that is not very sure about anymore about its uh, support from United States as much as it used to be. Do you think they're going to risk their relationship with China right now? I mean, guys, Israel, a country that keeps saying never forget and never forget and never forget and spends millions and millions of dollars on Holocaust memorials all across... Oh, I said the word shit. Uh, all, all, oh. all, across the, all across the planet, and rightfully so, because we shouldn't forget. I want those memorials i want those memorials but what's the point of those memorials if you keep saying never forget but you keep forgetting because it, guess what guys israel as a country right now hasn't even recognized the armenian genocide uh -oh. okay they haven't recognized the armenian genocide because they're worried about the relationship with turkey Turkey, a country that is outright anti-Israel, right, 
still has trade agreements with Israel and stuff. So Israel wouldn't even call out the Armenian genocide because they value their relationship with Turkey. So if they're not going to sacrifice their relationship with Turkey, what makes you think they want to sacrifice their relationship with the China? Yeah. Right? I mean, think about the hypocrisy. The country that should be leading the way when it comes to human rights, when it comes to anything that gets close to what happened during the World War II, even if it's like miles away, even if it just smells and tastes like it just a tiny bit, Israel should be leading the way. That's the whole point of all these memorials. Again, I'm, I think these memorials are justified, but what's the goddamn point if you're not going to use them to promote human rights to be the leading country when it comes to the promotion of human rights across the planet? Bunch of hypocrites. Lorraine is saying, leave China alone. You don't know enough. Oh, my God. Lorraine has the worst takes. <laughs> Why? Wasn't this the same person that told us to leave people's... Wait, Lorraine just told us to let w women, let little girls wear hijab in schools and we should leave them alone and we shouldn't promote... Sec like, we should... We said that hijab should be banned in public schools for children. And she said, leave them alone. Let them wear what they want. And now she's defending China? China? Yeah, you know China, Lorraine? Lorraine. They definitely, they definitely don't let the religious be religious in China. Did you not listen to what we were just saying? Because that's China. kind of like the opposite of what China is known. So to she's do. like, she like, thinks we're say. like weirder fascists who think like people should be able to wear the hijab, but not in a public school, not be forced on children. She thinks that's too fascistic. But then she's defending a government that is putting Muslims in concentration camps in the millions. And forcing them to drink alcohol and eat pork just to show that they're not fully Muslim. Like she's defending that and she's calling us fresh. Oh my God. This is they're kind obviously of American. Focus on your own backyard. <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> One, I'm... he's not American. Do you not hear the accent? Like, <laughs> I'm not in Canada. I'm not in the United States. I'm, I'm, and also, I'm not American. But Lorraine is amazing. She has the worst takes today. Worst takes. It's kind of fun to it's like kind of see fun. how bad it's going to get. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And they also have sterilization programs. Okay, yeah. So she's in, she's supporting China and their sterilization programs and, and Muslims. And apparently, we're the fascists here. Um, yeah, we're exactly. Qasim is saying that's why we are here, to not leave China alone. Exactly. Yeah, we're literally we consider China one of the top enemies of enlightenment. So, yeah. <sighs> Anyways, no, you. can I clap for the next news? Um. Yeah. Next news. Next news: Gay conversion therapy. Hundreds of religious leaders call for ban. More than 370 worldwide religious leaders are calling for a ban on quote-unquote conversion therapy, which is defined as the attempt to alter a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. A declaration calling for the ban was launched at a conference in the United Kingdom sponsored by the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office on December 16th. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has repeatedly promised to ban conversion therapy across the nation. Religious signatories included famed Archbishop, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, former Chief Rabbi of Ireland David Rawson, and the Anglican Bishop of Liverpool Paul uh, Bayes. However, other religious figures said that a ban could risk criminalizing pastors. Um, that's a good thing. Hello, <laughs> criminal. <laughs> like, wait, is that supposed to be like a negative? Um, it's like you just it's another religious freedom or religious privilege excuse, like, criminalizing people pastors who, yeah, for doing conversion therapy. Yes, yeah. please, thank you very much. Yeah, fraudulent, um, fraudulent, pseudoscientific, completely harmful, traumatizing, and abusive fake treatments. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like that sounds like a crime to me. Like, don't yeah, it would don't be a crime if you did something like this for someone with cancer? Guys, guys, this is not good. People might actually get 
criminalized for doing crime. No, no, this is bad. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. don't threaten us with a good time. Um, um, here's the thing. Well, you want to say something before me? I was just going to give more context, but you go ahead. Okay, I just want to warn people, okay? Do not use this as an excuse to be like, hey, religion is not that bad. Look at these religious leaders calling for a ban. It wasn't, it wouldn't even be a problem to begin with if it wasn't for religion. This wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for religion. It's as if somebody comes, if the 10 people come to your house and they all take a giant dump in your all of them at the same time in your kitchen and then eight of <laughs> oh, them no. leave eight of them leave and two of them like hey sorry about that i think that was bad and what and then one of them said like i could help you a little bit maybe for five minutes with cleaning up but just for five minutes and I'm like oh my god look not all of them <laughs> this is not all bad one of them is staying back and is helping me clean How all this you mess. wrecked havoc <laughs> I'm like, wow, thank you so much. Thank you, like, uh, so much. No, and again, even if individual people could be good, this shouldn't be an endorsement of their ideology, okay? Um, good people could have the crappiest ideology, and their ideology could be pure crap, even though they are influenced by other sources other than the religion, so they are not pure evil. Even if your religion is pure evil and you're influenced by your religion, that doesn't mean you are necessarily purely evil, because you are also influenced by many other sources of influence. Um, so this was, there were some interesting things. Um, so just more background on what conversion therapy is or what it can mean and how bad it can get. The term conversion therapy refers to any form of treatment of quote unquote psychotherapy, which aims to change a person's sexual orientation or to suppress a person's gender identity, usually to make them straight or perceived to be cisgendered um it can range from electric shock therapy to religious teachings or talking therapies designed to change someone's sexuality the practice is already outlawed in switzerland areas of australia and areas of canada and the u.s um so here's the thing one of the potential holdups concerns the definition of the term conversion therapy and how it relates to all LGBT people. While government figures that show that transgender people undergo conversion therapy at the highest rate of any LGBT group, some campaigners feel that any government changes could exclude conversion therapy based on gender identity and only focus on sexuality. Because I think it, I, I could be wrong. I think in a, at least in, as an, as an American, um, when people think conversion therapy, they usually think of it as in the sense of being like gay or lesbian. They don't normally, it's not popularized thinking of it as a trans issue. Um, others fear the changes will go too far. One therapist who helps people come to terms with their transgender identity told this reporter um, that they were scared about what the government could ban. The therapist who wanted to remain anonymous for fear of losing their career said their work helps trans young people come to terms with their acquired gender is legal. However, after advising young people to begin hormone treatments, the therapist has been accused of quote unquote performing conversion therapy by some unsupportive parents. They added if uh, the government do finally or if the government does finally ban conversion therapy, they need to be clear on what it means because it could do more harm than good, especially for trans healthcare. That's fear mongering. Like, no, like they're, they are banning religious nonsense. You medically prescribing hormone therapy to somebody that is a trans for, from with a scientific, you know, this, this, this is not, obviously then that's not what they're going after. They're like, oh, what if they're coming after us? They're not coming after you. Stop. Like, th that's not yeah, it. It was like the dumbest take ever. It was yeah. Like, because anti-trans parents accuse me of conversion therapy, that means that my trans affirmative health care is now going to be potentially harmed by a ban. Like, this is a pro-trans <laughs> law. What a dumb some, take. <laughs> this is a pro-trans law. And there are some tr anti-trans people that are don't like you. And you're like, what if all of a sudden they're the same? What if they just call me that and now it's that? What if the, the government that is trying to support trans people all of a sudden get confused 
and take on the side of anti-trans people and come after you. Like this sounds like you just want attention. <laughs> So like, like <laughs> what if the people that are exactly the opposite of each other all of a sudden become the same? Yeah. <laughs> what, um, a what the hell? The this person. The, um... this person like, <laughs> Katie, this person... Katie is saying you should, well, if we don't know the gender of this person, they should lose their career if his, if their take on this is that dumb. <laughs> and then this, specify this was. This person is just like, how could this news be about me? That's what this, <laughs> this news has to be somehow about me. Okay, and that's then, what it is. But more from the um, religious aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter Linus, the UK director of the Evangelical Alliance, which represents more than 3,000 churches in the UK, said that he supports, quote, an, an end to extreme and coercive behavior without banning change or conversion, which are central to Christianity. He told the BBC that a ban could risk criminalizing pastors, counselors, and even those who are asked to pray with people. Sheikh Ramzi, a, an Islamic scholar and founder of the Oxford Islamic Information Center, said that it was important that imams were allowed to offer help if gay Muslims wanted to change their sexual orientation. We want to help them and not damage them, he told the BBC. But for Joe, who was a survivor of conversion therapy from an Orthodox Jewish family highlighted in this article, an immediate ban is necessary. Because it's there, it is clear evidence based psychological and off potentially physical harm being caused on people. Okay. We should go to the next news now. Oh, you don't have any take on what? Sheikh Ramzi had to say. <laughs> Wait, can you repeat what he said? I was preparing the next. He said that it is important that imams are allowed to offer help if gay Muslims wanted to change their sexual orientation. What kind of help? Conversion therapy. Oh no. Okay. You know what? The fact that imams and priests think that they have any cred any relevance in any of these discussions is already a problem. Mm -hmm. Guys, look, look at you. You think you're an expert because you are looking at ancient scripture and like reading old texts from the Goat Herder's Guide to the Galaxy. And you think, <laughs> you think your knowledge has any relevance in modern society over figuring out what what's the best advice and how to live a life. Like, oh, that's so cute. Okay, okay, okay. You go away now. Let the adults figure out how to handle this. Okay, you guys. <laughs> Look at <laughs> that's it's, what I mean. it's really bad because often in an Islamic context, not always, but I've it's known to happen, gay conversion therapy is in the form of a rukya, aka an exorcism. I think that the fact that any government, any place, thinks it's even relevant to talk to priests or imams about their views, even journalists thinking about like, oh, let's see what this imam has to say. Like, why not just ask a donkey or something? Like, what the hell? Like, let me ask my five-year-old as well. Well, you're at it. Like, why is this even the fact that this is part of the, their opinions as part of a discussion mm -hmm. is shows how backward everything is, how far behind we are. Like, what is it? What are these people's credentials? They have no relevancy. They have nothing to offer, right? They have nothing. We're all just making playing make believe, like as if they're experts in anything. Um. Oh, we have more hilarious comments for Lorraine, but we should move on. Yes, we should. All right. Um, clap or no clap? Um, I'll clap. It's not good. Adam, it's wait, good. say, Adam, say, where can I get this book? It's called The Bible and the Quran. Yeah. Anyway. Next news. Next news, homophobic priest caught watching gay adult videos in church. In New York City, New York, Father George Rutler is a Catholic pre priest in New York City known for his work on the Eternal, World, Eternal Word television network and his long history of homophobia. He has recently been accused of sexually assaulting a security guard who caught him watching a gay porn video. A 22-year-old woman was hired as a security guard at St. Michael the Archangel Church and said that she recorded Father Rutler watching a video of two, two men engaged in oral sex. 
The woman said that Rutler then aggressively threw himself on me and grabbed me sexually, aggressively, and I was fighting him off of me, and that he attacked her, quote, like a monster. She has since filed a police report, turned over the cell phone footage to police, and sent it to the Archdiocese of New York as well as the Vatican. Father Rutler is now no longer serving as a priest and has denied the accusations in a letter to local parishioners. There seems to be a video or picture of it. So how could he deny it? Well, based on the footage, you just see like the back of his head. Like they're saying that. Um, and you can see the collar, the white collar. Yeah. And the office that is. Like, no, it's, a, it's not me. It's just other. It's just this other bold priest that just happens to be in my office and watching gay porn. It's some. It's some. <laughs> no, really, is that his excuse? Well, okay. Let me let me give the quote. The National Catholic Reporter reported that it obtained the 18 seconds of cell phone footage that shows the back of a bald man watching two men engaged in oral sex on a computer with religious icons on the wall. The 75-year-old mm. Rutler is bald, but his identity cannot be confirmed in the video. So he's just a random bald guy with a priest costume at his office and <laughs> watching porn? Is that his excuse? I mean, to be fair, they're just covering their tracks because these are allegations, right? But no, but is that seriously his explanation of this photo? That that's that... not his explanation. That is just the mm. reporting agency, you know, being careful not to. Oh, being careful. Okay, 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 okay. Alleged. Right, but but, the, but you know what the defense should be. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I mean, the him uh, research. I'm doing research. I'm just investigating the sin. If you want to fight sin, you have to research the sin viciously, hard. Well, right? I mean, except for the sexually assaulted for woman who caught him part. Um, it was there was researching assaults, which is another sin. Oh, no. <laughs> what do they call it in anthropology? Co-witnessing. Hmm. Um, not for si no science is another sin. That's not for science. It's it, for it's for Christ. You know, I'm sacrificing my eyes just to it's understand. Such a messed up situation too, because she was this security guard. She's only 22. This was her second day on the job. What really? Yeah. <laughs> like she's like, screw up, f my wow. life. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Like? Um, so she, well, she hired a private investigator. The private investigator filed charges against him. A, no, f excuse me, not charges. A police report against him on her behalf. Um. Rutler, a Trump supporter, has a history of anti-LGBT sentiments. In, statements in 1990, he wrote that the priesthood should be reserved for men because God made males and females equal but different, and quote any contradictions of that is a homosexual vision of culture. <laughs> he also wrote that quote the abortionists and the sodomites are allied because they both want to kill people. Quote when homosexual when homosexualists. Ooh, that's I like that word, homosexualist. Oh, I like if I, I, if I was gay, I would use that. Yeah. Like, are you gay or straight? I'm a homosexualist. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's kind of a kind of a sexy spin on it. Um, uh, it makes it Wait, sound so I... fancy. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, AGA's comment is so funny. Read that. Yeah, it it was the other bald-headed priest that uses my that uses the office I occupy. <laughs> That's perfect. Yes, that should be officially his response. This should be officially his response. Wait. Um, hmm. Can we use it? No. Homosexualists. What would be? What? How could we? No. Okay. I wanted to make us less boring, but we're not. You, know, you guys have. You could. You could have it. But would you? Would you? I, hmm. I just know I wanted to finish that quote. I right, finish it. When the homosexualists are infecting each other le lethally, he's referring to HIV, and abortionists are killing unborn children, they are united in a commitment to death and self-destruction. 
once you start telling people that they can have safe sex, you are telling them that they can live a fantasy and pretend it's real, he wrote, adding that, quote, the only real sex is sex for the procreation of life. Which I think might be um, possibly the most triggering statement for Armin. <laughs> You're muted. Matthew, is Matthew, why would you even do that? Don't you haven't you heard about the purge? Oh my God, Armin, let's not talk Guys, about her right now. Move on to X Hamster. This whole PH is no. Not <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving a whole people good advice. Question. I'm giving people good advice. PH is not good anymore. It's been a purge. Every, all your favorite videos that you bookmark for years, oh, no. your go-to videos that were always there and it was always guaranteed, guaranteed to get you there fast if you needed it. They're all gone. Years of collection, years of research and data collection gone over an instance. <sighs> what a crime. What a crime. Like, what's the whole point? Like, how do I even... Please, pl guys, please be supportive of Armin during this time of grief. Hmm. Is it's, it just um... me? Come on. It's every... It's every oh my gosh, wait, this is, this is gold. More recently, Rutler said that, quote, the Vatican has become a theological Chernobyl because of Pope Francis's more liberal views on a number of issues, including the tolerance of LGBTQ people and the death penalty. Wait what yeah okay okay we need to um okay it's funny how people are pretending it's just me i know it's everybody i know all these people <laughs> are, i know all these people that are saying oh poor armin oh, uh, they all they all cried they all cried they just not they just didn't show their tears okay we definitely can't clap for this news we can't no all right hold on i need to Oh, wait, I was going to clap. Next news. Next news. Indian woman who married Dalit men killed and buried by brothers. Armin, guess what state of India this happened in? Uttar Pradesh? You are correct. What does that say about Hinduism, if it was that easy to guess? Okay, so... In Uttar Pradesh, India, the Delhi police have recently arrested a 32-year-old man alleged to have killed his 23-year-old sister and buried the body in the family's farm in the Mainpuri district after she married a Dalit man despite her family's objections. The victim was identified as Chantni Kashyap. According to the police, Chandni's three brothers met her in Delhi on November 17th and took her back home to Mainpuri on the pretense of mending their strained relationship. Police have alleged that on November 20th, she was shot dead by her brothers who then buried the body on the family farm. On November 22nd, her husband, Arjun, 25, submitted a complaint to the Delhi police reporting that his wife had been kidnapped. Nearly three weeks later, the body was exhumed and sent for postmortem. Chandni's other two brothers, sorry, other two brothers accused in the murder have yet to be apprehended by authorities. Hinduism, Susanna, is just a way of life. It, and it just sucks. It's, it's just a way of life. It's not a religion. You can't criticize it the way you criticize because my like Abrahamic mind cannot comprehend the dharma. This is the way of life of Hinduism, and it sucks and it's evil. I get. Do you want to explain to people who don't know what Dalit is and why? Well, Katie's giving us a little bit of context. The woman is from a Shudra family. Shudra is being the lowest caste in Hinduism, while her husband is a Dalit, which is even quote-unquote worse meaning he is so low that he is even outside the caste system he is an outcast dalit means outcast they're outside of yes caste. so um the caste system is a part of hinduism in which basically people are ranked according to their birthright and what their life path is um partially has to do with what karma you racked up for yourself in the life before um 
and you are uh, basically stuck that way. You can't there uh, yeah there there's not social mobility like out of this um yeah luke is saying good old uttar pradesh the florida of india hashtag doll lives matter honestly that's an insult to florida that's it yeah um so hale is saying dang i didn't know that india was effed up too so hale you need to go back watch some of our content because this isn't even the worst of it. No. Um, but this is really sad. Um, he said that when he went to go um, identify her body, she was just riddled with bullets. Wow. Yeah. Um, there are differing stories on how they um, incentivized her or entrapped her into traveling back with them. Some say that they were doing it under the pretense of trying to mend their strained relationship. Um, others say that they basically were like, oh, we need your help repairing something. Like, come back with us. And they just, like, took her. Um, he, uh, so they were only married for, like, a few months, I believe. It's really mm. sad. Um, this is this whole caste system is why India is one of the most bigoted countries in the world, if not the most bigoted country in the world. It is actually, I think, the most bigoted. Statistically, it, India consistently yeah. ranks as one of the most, no, the most racist country in the world. Yeah, um, and it because and people say why say racist? Well, because caste system is based on heritage. Yeah. So technically, that's racism, and it is. It all comes from religion. Okay, this is pure. This is like if anybody denies the link to the caste system uh, has with with Hinduism, you know, then then tell them to sh shut the f up. Like they have no idea what they're talking about. It definitely comes from religion. There has no other source but religion. Okay, this is how religion poisons everything. It's really uh, sad. Yeah, and it's so um, it's romanticized in the West. Yeah, it's amazing how so many people in the world have been convinced that Hinduism doesn't have a problem, where Hinduism is responsible for one of the most evil um, systems that is out there. Like the caste system is vile and disgusting, and it's being is influencing so many people's lives. Like the number of people that is being that this is being influenced by is astronomical to other to many other religious practices, right? Um, and people just dismiss Hinduism as harmless, even though it's causing this much. This is a disease. This is the disease that India needs to be cured of. But go on. Um, Randy. YouTube, I'm talking about the disease that I'm talking about is the religion, not the people. The yes. people need to be helped. Like I'm talking, India, India, and Indians can do so much better than Hinduism. And, and in fact, many do. Many do. What? Exactly. Randy is saying religion at its worst. Um, Katie is saying um, to all people saying hashtag Dalit Lives Matter, much appreciated. Katie is a dollar. Um, much appreciated, although tech to be technically correct, the victim, aka Chantney, was Shudra. So, although marrying a dollar, so she probably lost caste. Um, and I still think dollar lives matter because the fact that her husband was a dollar like motivated this, presumably. Um, some more information. Uh, Arjun said they met eight years ago. Quote, she lived near my house. We got married on June 12th, so just a few months ago. Since I belonged to a lower caste, her family did not accept our marriage. Her brothers took her to um, Mainpuri on November 17th, saying that she should visit for a couple days and they need to make some payments for construction work and that she should accompany them to the village. After she left Delhi, I could not get in touch with her and had called her cousins. The family lied, he said. The cousin told me she committed suicide. Another relative said she got married to someone else, while a third relative said that she had returned to Delhi. So that's how... He knew that something was up because no one had their story. Can't be, can't, let's be clear though, the Dalit here is the victim as well. He just lost yeah. his wife. Just yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, I don't even know. I don't even know which one is worse to be killed or to have the person you loved so much be killed because of imagine the because, because of, of who the, you are. Because how you're born. Imagine feeling you being responsible. Imagine I hope that oh my god, imagine the self-hate that that could encourage. For you to think this person, to for you to be made to believe that 
you cursed this person. Like you, maybe you shouldn't have married her. Maybe you were selfish. Maybe it was better if you've never met her. This, this mm. person that you love, this person that you love, you brought this on her by marrying her. Maybe if you were a little bit less selfish, you would just stay, even though you love her, you would stay away from her. So you didn't do this to her. Imagine if I have to deal with all that trauma. Holy crap. I might, I might think the Dalit is even the bigger victim here. I don't know. Well, I mean, at least the Dalit is still alive to hopefully find I don't know him. which one I would prefer personally. I don't know. It's, it's well, tough. Yeah. Arun is saying there is no link with religion. Such news are often fake. Oh, my God. And then <laughs> this is leftist media. Then Gustav is saying... Armin, be careful, buddy. You got suspended on Twitter already. I'm not familiar with Hinduism, but linking everything to Hinduism is not fair. We are not linking everything to Hinduism. We are linking um, a belief system that comes directly out of Hinduism with Hinduism. So. Oh, no. Let me check. Is it is it Armin again, or is it also me? Oh, no. Okay, I'm live, but Armin is gone. <laughs> Oh no, I don't want to start the next news without him. Oh wait, you're back! <laughs> Unmute yourself. Are you back? Yes! Okay. <laughs> I was, I was, no! Oh. Okay, when this happens, it's not me. You just continue, okay? I mean, it's not you. You just continue. I know, but I didn't want to do the last news without you. Okay, okay. Just read. Just hang out with the live chat and read their comments um, until I come back. Okay. Um. So now it's time for the last news. Okay. And Crap. it's good news. Yes. Last news. Last news. Study finds nearly half of American LGBTQ adults are religious. So this article, what I want to highlight, and this is this is a story I got from our friends at Atheists for Liberty. Um, and what they highlighted is an alternative title should be over half of LGBTQ adults are not religious. Because this article phrases it as nearly half are religious, meaning they're actually the minority. But let me continue. Um, so that's why I said this is positive news, because over half of LGBTQ adults are non-religious. Okay, into the news. A study released in late November from the UCLA School of Law's Williams Institute reveals that a little less than half of the LGBTQ adults in the United States are religious. Out of roughly 16,000 respondents polled in the Gallup Daily Tracking Survey, 47% were moderately or highly religious. Religiosity was determined by self-reported self service attendance and the importance of religion in daily life. Researchers found that those who were older, Black, or lived in the South, meaning the Southern United States, were the most likely to be religious. Um, Kareth, Kareth J. Conran, the lead author and research director at the Williams Institute, said, My hypothesis is that fewer people in young adulthood are choosing religion. It's a pattern we see in non-LGBT people as well, she noted. Quote, people are consciously deciding to step away from the religion of their youth because it doesn't embrace their values, end quote. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of comments that are negative towards this. They're saying why so many um, so many gay people believe in religion. They're calling it Stockholm Syndrome. Um, and I agree with that. But again, the percentages of um, LGBT people believing in religion is much less than average people, which is not a... Which is, do you think they... So what do you think about that? Like that's some you could use that as a way to celebrate LGBTQ people more, given that on average they are less religious. Yes. Okay. So nearly so so if forty seven percent of LGBT adults are religious, this is quote considerably lower than the general US population where more than two thirds say they are religious. So they are more 
secular, non-religious, atheistic than the rest of yeah. the adult population. So the title ruined this because most people are looking at this title and they're, they're reading half of LGBTQ people are religious and they're looking at it. They're like, oh, look at this. It's so bad. How could you be religious if you or are? Or they're seeing it as a positive thing if you're not us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, to me, it seems like the, the this was a good news that was ruined by the title because people are like, like, for example, Damir saying, what? what? Wait, the lead it, author of this paper also predicts that these numbers will decline drastically in future years. That's great. She, Look, Emily is saying this. This. Hold on. Maybe, maybe I could share my screen. <clears throat> I can show you guys. Look at this. Um, this disappointed me. In, yeah, I'm zooming. In. Look, these are people that are pro LGBT. The title. Look at the title. The title ruined it. Nearly half of LGBT adults are religious. Um, study finds people are like so that's some stock, Stockholm syndrome BS right there. Nobody said LGBTQ were perfect, so they're not looking at this. They're like, Oh, for this person gets it, less than half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go, fix it. Less than half. Oh, there you go. Zoltan saying less than half of LGBTQ adults R. are. <laughs> This is that person gets it, but a lot of people don't understand. Mm -hmm. People are like, "Oh my God, this is so disappointing." Half of LGBTQ believe in religious. This is much less than average. This is progress. Look, Emily saying this disappointed me. Actually, this hurts me a bit. Um, childhood indoctrination is a bitch. No, this Guys, is like they're doing half better. is. They're doing better than the general population. <laughs> half is amazingly low. Half is like, ha like where where are, what? Let, I, I know, but even if it was half. Like mm -hmm. if she tell me like oh seventy five percent of this population is religious, I'm like oh this is like sounds like a really progressive population. It's only seventy five percent. Half is really low based on what's like what what the norm is in the on the planet. Look at this. Look at these all these wrong bad takes. Somebody effed up the survey. This person doesn't even believe the survey. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. There's a, there go. This person gets it. Still better than average. Yes, yeah. that's the whole point. Again, I don't know who who did this title. They ruined this article. Well, I'm half confused. is amazingly I think, low. I think I think for people who are not like us, they probably see LGBT people being religious as a good thing because they think that it highlights inclusivity and religious reform. Hmm. So I think I think they see it as a positive thing coming from a very different perspective in fact um i remember reading an article a few years ago when i was taking a queering religion course um i could be completely misremembering so be very skeptical about this that um younger generations of lgbt people are um among are increasingly more religious although the results of this survey contradict that because it's those who are older who are more likely to be religious in the LGBTQ community. So let me give you some more facts. And well, this is more positivity. Armin, I want you to pay attention to this. Okay. <laughs> um, only 38.5% of 18 to 24 year olds in the LGBT community are religious. That's, a, that's such a small percentage in comparison to the um, general population. About 40% of 25 to 34 year olds are religious. That compares to more than half, meaning 51% of those who are 35 to 49 who would be classified as religious, and 56% of those who are 50 to 64. So the younger you are in the LGBT community, the, it becomes increasingly less likely that you'll be religious. And this study highlighted something else very interesting. Um, even straight Americans have cited their church's treatment of the gay community as part of the reason why they've left, this mm. lead author noted. Because she was saying, people are considerably deciding to step away from the religion of their faith because it doesn't embrace their values. This applies to yeah. straight Americans as well. Good, good. Come to the dark side. Come to us. <laughs> we have Give us leave. all your we gays. Give uh, us all your gays. We'll take them. We'll take um, them. 
According to a 2019 Peer Research Center analysis, 26% of Americans identify as agnostic, atheist, or nothing in particular, which is up from 17% just a decade earlier. That's a huge growth in the span of a decade. Um, there was something else interesting. Um... Oh, and then the later half of this article gets into um, people who are, like, trying to queer religion, so to speak. So, Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum of the Congregation of Beit Simchat Torah, New York's LGBTQ synagogue, said the barriers gay people face when participating in their faith have only started to fall. There's been progress, but I deal with people all the time from very liberal religious families who faced horrible bigotry and rejection, she said. But she added the hunger for spirituality is deep among gay people, perhaps even deeper than the larger population. Quote, everyone has that desire for meaning or purpose, but for the LGBTQ people, it's right there on the surface, Kleinbaum told NBC News. Anyone who goes through the process of discovering a deeper truth about themselves, especially if it's at odds with the larger world, understands a sense of revelation or deeper truth. It's our going to Mount Sinai. Oh, yeah. You're holding up San Harris's book? No, uh, I'm just saying it's possible to get the spirituality and all that you want with that religion. You know, I don't even know what spirituality means anymore. I think it's I don't even know what it means word. anymore. Yeah. Like, is, isn't that just another word for, like, feelings? <laughs> <laughs> like, legitimately. Anyway. Legitimately. I, I think... I think that's what it means. Um, yes. Another interesting factoid, the vast majority of religious LGBTQ Americans are Christian. Split fairly evenly among Catholics, 25%, and Protestants, 28%, and other Christian denominations, which are 24.5%. Only about 2.5% identify as Jewish and 2% as Muslim. So the Muslim are the smallest portion of the LGBT community but they're also minority americans at large so all right i'm having connection issues so it's hard for me to hear you so we should end this here because we already finished everything okay mm -hmm. unless you want to say anything you can say it but i am having a hard time reading and listening so but i did good even with the bad connection today yeah of course we, of we course. both did <laughs> yeah. yes we both did but mostly me <laughs> <laughs> all right guys make sure if you're watching this on facebook make sure you also hop over to our youtube and subscribe uh, if you are on youtube but you also use twitch make sure you follow all the links to our twitch facebook youtube our new oh guys if you want here's a better book actually <laughs> i'm kidding um no i'm not kidding uh why yeah, there's no god if you want to get this book for free for free uh newsletter yeah, subscribe copy. to Subscribe to our newsletter in the description and you get this book for free. Okay. It will be sent to you. Subscribe to our newsletter and you get Why There Is No God. It's a bestseller on uh, analytical philosophy on, on Amazon and it could be yours for free if you subscribe to our newsletter. So do it. Do it. Do it now. Right, and go. wait, you? guys. Wait. We have a new draft of our sexy transgender Jesus. We do. Coming out soon, like tonight. Ooh. And it's almost time for the final version to be revealed, but you can only see the uncensored version if you're a patron. So link to our Patreon below and you can get the sexiest uncensored blasphemous art on this planet for mm -hmm. as little as $1 a month. Nobody. That, we, but we're do gonna... not support it financially if you are struggling financially. Yes, yes. The only negative side effect to everything we're doing is that we're going to put Charlie Hebdo out of business because nobody, <laughs> nobody does blasphemy as good as Atheist Republic. All right. Cool. All right. Subscribe. Do it. Do it now. It's Dharma. It's Hekma. Do it. it oh, you will never lack Hekma. <laughs>